It's time to roll the credits with Chris and Wayne. Good evening. Here we are once again to bring you more exciting interviews with the talented folks who make film and TV on Roll the Credits with Chris and Wayne. I'm Wayne Pyle. And I'm Chris Ty. And as you know, we are the official video podcast of the Hunter Mountain Film Festival, which is online this year from October 22nd through the 24th. For more info, please visit HunterMountainFilmFestival.com. Hey, Chris, I'm so glad that we're back to shooting our episodes of Roll the Credits, but here we are mm -hmm. still in the midst of the pandemic. Some things have gotten better for sure. We can go to more places, we can do more things, and but there are still some restrictions in place. And unfortunately, yeah. some people are still getting sick. But uh, overall, it seems like our situation is getting better. But do you remember back uh, when the pandemic first started, we were under lockdown? Well, you know, Wayne, it's actually kind of a blur since it was such a confusing time and things were changing almost on a daily basis, really. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I know um, that in those early days, a lot of folks were worried about their loved one's health, their own health, their jobs. And I, I, I realized that uh, to kind of ease the anxiety of these pandemic times, a lot of people picked up various pandemic hobbies. Um, I know for myself, uh, besides trying to keep my son um, on his homework online, mm -hmm. um, I found myself doing things like <laughs> paint by numbers. It's like, who am I? I'm like crunching <laughs> over the thing, you know, doing paint by numbers. I took some online classes. I baked a lot, but not sourdough bread. Um, I made that silly foamy coffee drink that was all over the internet. Um, I taught that free ongoing <laughs> acting class, you know, that you were a part of. Mm -hmm. um, and yep. I even taught myself how to play the ukulele. <laughs> how about you? What did you do? <laughs> well, I'd like to say I did something, uh, you know, like take up knitting or learn to play the didgeridoo. Wait, <laughs> you do. But you know me, I, I consider myself a perpetual student, always trying to hone and learn the craft of acting so I get a little better. But so I, I found the silver lining like a lot of actors did and uh, took advantage of lots of online opportunities with casting directors, Zoom sessions and classes like the ones that you offer, by the way. And if anything good came of this, I guess I could say I developed more as an actor. But the best part is because there's so many uh, self tapes, I can now do a two, three, four, ten takes if I want. <laughs> instead of that one in the casting directors yeah room, that's true that's live, true it's, you know yeah the way with self-taping now is is uh, we can do that which is nice well our guests yes. on the show tonight what they did was they made their own comedy tv show during the pandemic as well as other things we'll find out about tonight. Um, the show is called The Anderson's TV Show, and it's a hilarious look inside the marriage of the actor-comedian couple Happy and Meg Anderson. Meg does a really mean Ruth Bader Ginsburg impression, by the way. <laughs> well, not only that, Wayne, Meg Anderson is also an actress and writer known for the Blunderpuss, Scotus and the City, and Improvising. She is the founding member of one of New York's longest running long form improv teams, the Baldwins at the People's Improv Theater. And Happy Anderson, her husband, is known for his extensive work in film and on TV, where he appears as a recurring actor on shows like Claws, actually one of my favorite shows during the pandemic, uh, Mindhunter, <laughs> The Blacklist, Snowpiercer, The Tick, Gotham, Quarry, and films like The Bird Box, Hitman, Ooh. Cold in July, Bright, Bad Boys for Life, The New Mutants, and many, many more. Let's give a warm roll the credits with Chris and Wayne. Welcome to the very talented Happy and Meg Anderson. Hey. Yay. Hey. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us tonight. Oh my hey. gosh. With an introduction I, like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to come every night. Yeah. There you go. There you That's go. Right. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for being on the show. It's so good to, to see both of you. And it's nice to finally meet you, Meg, even if it's only online. Um, yes. Did that, so with that introduction, did any did either of you come up with any pandemic hobbies besides making the TV show? Well, you go. Um, <laughs> great question. I started writing. Very a nice. Lot, a lot. I looked. I went to my dead letters drawer. <laughs> I have ah. a huge, big uh, filing cabinet, and I was like, "My job is gone now. I was a consultant that is no more." And wow. so, let me face all of the things that I haven't ever faced. And I pulled out all of these ideas. I was like, "This idea used to be so good. I'll never write it." <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it. And I was like, "You know what? It is not a good idea." I wrote, I wrote, like, oh, right, like, right really for real writing things. So that was really great. I nice. did try that foamy coffee thing. That was did you? Nasty. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, it was, I, I don't know. It. 
Yeah, it was like, ah, well, you try to drink it. You can't really drink it because yeah. it's all foam. <laughs> like, use, like, coffee, espresso, sugar. I yeah. figure it out. How about you, Happy? Did you come up with anything? Well, what's funny is I live with Meg and spend almost every second with her, and I had no idea about the fucking coffee. It was when you were... <laughs> <laughs> I did it under the cover of darkness. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that's one of those sneaky things you're just like i'm gonna just do this on the side <laughs> well one of the other things i did early in the pandemic and actually i'm just using this as an excuse because i do this all the time anyway is scroll social media and i remember when i found your first episode of the anderson's tv show and i you know i was just feeling kind of down because well you guys know pandemic and yeah. uh, <laughs> i clicked on it and watched it and seriously it really made me laugh and just really feel a whole lot better um and i just most most recently watched lady parts uh hilarious by the way <laughs> even if it is just a little not safe for work <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but hilarious i had to rush out and tell heidi about it you know and, and, and tell her all the all the different things i was wondering if 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 happy actually studied up for that or did you ah. just know it <laughs> <laughs> no I, I we were doing a different video and then meg was like let's talk about this book you know like, okay. I like that, nice well can yeah. you tell us can you tell us a little bit about how the project got started and what your process was for making it yeah of course so um we started out as most people did in pandemic um miserable <laughs> yeah, yeah well and it's so funny because we were like you know we worked so so much each of us was out of town like maybe twice a month so the before idea, in the before times yeah. so yeah. the idea that we got to actually hang out together we're like well that, that's yeah. actually kind of like a positive thing um and then we're like okay like this is this is so much time together now um, and you know, we have a pretty good sense of humor about ourselves and each other. And I, we did some video where it was like me poking fun at you. And then I was like, this would be so hilarious. And, I put it on media. <laughs> and everybody that knows happy knows that he doesn't like to do whatever. I don't, maybe we did in the stories. Maybe we did the first one where it was like, I sneakily recorded him being like, um hey i'm gonna take out the trash and he's like no no uh, okay fine i'll do it i was like <laughs> I knew you would do nice that. nice <laughs> like the dumb things that we do and yeah. it, of all the like character videos i've made of all the things we've done we started getting text messages from people like friends like my mom's neighbor is this really sweet woman she's like when am i seeing more of that nice <laughs> nice that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> okay so this is something people can like identify with and they like us and yep yeah so we started yeah so we started making more that's great. yeah and that's that's when it was surprising when it went from like your mom's neighbor to like people i've neither one of us have ever met yeah. <laughs> like right <laughs> messaging being like well hey we i want another one <laughs> nice yeah. really nice is there a is there like a funny story that you remember making one like something funny that happened or something strange that happened during making one of the episodes well so we started when we were watching the election results Oh, right. You know, we're both big lefties. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's very clear who we were voting for. And we started watching the election results. And it we didn't initially start out making an Anderson's video. Right. Because right. we were like, we were like gently rocking back and forth. We're like, oh my God, this is the worst. And yeah, then yeah. we're like, <laughs> we can't be alone in this. Like this mm. is this is probably 72 million people are having the same reaction. So we're like, let's just film our reactions doing this yeah okay it'll be a video and then we had originally like we didn't have an ending for a while and then right. in our neighborhood there was a crazy huge celebration down at the end of the block so then we went down and i recorded and we got home and i was like i found the ending to it uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm our imitating life. yes i love when that happens yeah. That happens. Yeah, yeah yeah and and where can people find the show so uh, we're on Instagram and it's okay. um, the Anderson's TV show. All right, great. And we'll put that like down here. Thank somewhere. you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's been really, really fun to be able to collaborate on that. You know? Yeah. And to have an outlet to yeah. express yeah. anything. Yeah. Well, I, you know, you said, you know, people can relate and that's why they want more. I mean, listen, it's my wife and I here in <laughs> this little space. And, you know, you guys hit on some themes that I feel like we live through. So yeah, yeah, definitely makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for making that for everybody, guys. I, I hope to see more episodes. I mean, it is it's a lot of fun to follow and to thank and to you watch. guys yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah. sure. Editing, oh, yeah. We're 
we're editing a bunch right now. We have some. Oh, good. Things. Okay, great. excellent. Great. Excellent. Yeah. So, so you say you have a lot to edit. So, are you like shooting a bunch in a row, or is it just kind of as you come up with ideas, you shoot them, or how how does it usually work? So usually we um, uh, come up with a bit. So one of us has a bit, and then right. we'll pitch that to the other one. Be like, what do you think about this? We're like, oh, okay, yeah, great. And then either like we have a running list of things. Nice. You know, like my notes app. Oh, this would be funny. This would be funny. We'll sit down. And then um, we'll just be like, figure out an afternoon to do it. And then mostly we just film that. It takes, because we have two cameras. We have our two iPhones. Yeah. Yes, up, yeah. And yeah, like one that. light, pretty high quality <laughs> filming. You were talking about um, yourself taping. This is pretty low budget. Right, right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but like, I know because I'm I went to film school, so I'm mm -hmm. finally using all of my film school. Yes, yes. <laughs> finally, it only took years. <laughs> right, and right. All that editing. And like I know when we're when we finally start getting it, I was like, oh, okay, so this is what the game is. Okay, so now right. we have to go back and either hit that or I was like, you know, happy. Yeah. You have to be careful. Yeah, and it's happy. well, it's over there. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting that you say, you know, it's so low budget and you're using your phones and stuff, but it really goes to show you how the story is the, you know, one of the most important things and people will still, you know, even, you know, if it's like a shot on something, you know, that's not the highest quality stuff, people will still, you know, flock to it if it's a story that people can relate to. So I love that. I love that aspect of it. I think that's really great. Now, Happy, let me, let's switch gears a little bit here. You and I worked together uh, so many years ago <laughs> <laughs> on uh, Ty Jones' play Emancipation at the Shabazz Center. And Ty was on last season. He came in and, and interviewed. Um, and as I was... Um, <laughs> As I was looking up your information again on IMDb to write the bio and the intro and, and things like that, I noticed in your trivia section that it said there's one sentence that says, not related to angry Anderson. <laughs> and I thought it was just a joke you guys put in there, but then I clicked on the link and there actually is a guy named Angry Anderson. Dude, I didn't even put it on there. Oh, I you found didn't put it on there? Same way you did. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that's right that's right people can just go on and edit well it's it was so funny because when i was telling chris about you i was like filling him in on the story of how we met i said you know i went into the shabazz center i didn't really know anybody yet and you were sitting there <laughs> getting ready to go on and you had a giant bullwhip in your hand and you were like scowling because of you know what was going on and you turned to me and you're like i am happy <laughs> i was like i'm glad you're not angry you know <laughs> and i was like oh right it's happy anderson ty told me about how great you were and you know and then you know we we uh we got to work together which was a lot of fun um <laughs> yeah yeah a lot of fun and then years and years and years passed and i found out you were doing water well um and i went came down to see you and uh ariane Moaya do water well so now my my quick i would like i would love the quick catch up of from emancipation to you know now <laughs> so what was your journey like from you know like if you can sort of sum it up uh, you know in, in a way give us the give us the high points <laughs> well a couple of things first of all with arian uh yeah. may yeah. grew up with him Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. Wow. So we went to, he and I were friends in, at Indiana University. He was oh, an undergrad and wow. I was a grad student. So when Meg came to visit him to see us in Death of a Salesman, that's initially where we met. Oh, wow. Back wow. in 2002, but we didn't start dating until 2008 for a myriad of assorted reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, it's funny in terms of Waterwell, I moved uh, to the city in 2003 to do a Waterwell show. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. When it was still like <laughs> bare bones. Theater. Right, right. Yeah. We, we, we wrote as we went an adaptation of uh, Fuente of Ahuna and did it at the Duplex Cabaret Theater. Wow. A, wow. a place I never have set foot in ever again. Right, right. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was fun. I, I mean, you know, we were in our 20s and it was mm -hmm. like, you know. It was, it was a lot of fun. And um, not so basically, I went from uh, after that, I went from homeless to doing movies. Wow. <laughs> wow. Really? So what was what happened with the homelessness? I mean, what? Well, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I partied a lot. And so I ran out of money. And at first, I was just technically homeless, which is right. like riding the sofa circuit, you know, right? Sure but, sure. but then eventually, I found myself occasionally sleeping in Bryant Park or on a roof mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, then I cleaned up my act and uh, and it took a little bit of, you know, when in fact, when I met you, uh, it was pretty early on in that process. Um, yeah. 
you know, cleaning up and getting back in the audition game and stuff like that. And actually it was doing that show with you that I booked like my first big movie and, wow. and an episode of Law and Order and a commercial, like, I was like, oh, I can actually do this, you know? <laughs> right, I think right. There might be some kind of connection, Wayne. I don't know. Yeah. He <laughs> met you and then he blew up. <laughs> well, it, well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call that initial thing blow. <laughs> also, I love, I love that he was technically homeless. So <laughs> right, right. Like, yeah i've been technically homeless too so <laughs> it's, it's yeah, a yeah. wild wonderful ride yeah it's yeah. very motivating Ooh, yeah yeah it can be actually so remember when we did that play and ty was like you got to spit in my face like, that's right yeah spit. yeah he's like no, no you have to <laughs> finally i did and everyone hated me for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> man yeah it was a tough it was a tough role and a and a you know a very moving play and but I think you needed, I mean, yeah, I got, I get what he was going yeah. for with that, but yeah. Whew. In order to tell the story truthfully, yeah. I had to be as hateful as possible. Yep. But yep. Yeah. That was, that was, that was gross. Oh, well, yeah. I, I suppose one of the biggest compliments you can get, you know, especially some of the characters you play. Um, if someone sees you on the street, just to you know, oh, you son of a bitch, I hate you. Thank you. I, I accomplished. Like, something. You're like, thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Well, I, but I, uh, you. Yeah. well, I, I, I wanted to ask you, Meg, uh, because um, you're an improviser. Actually, that's what I grew up on is improv myself, and yeah, it was part of an improv group for like 25 years in the city, and I, cool. um, I just. Um, could never get enough of it. As a matter of fact, the first time I saw a script, I was so scared, I didn't know what to do with it. And I thought about some people when they get on stage without a script, how scared they get, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's just kind of a cool feeling. And, um, but I wanted to ask you about uh, your, your long form improv team, the Baldwins. So it's funny that you said that because I grew up in the Chicago suburbs. Mm -hmm. And I saw, like, we would always go see Second City. That was just like the thing yes. that we used to do. And so we saw Pinata Full of Bees and all these big shows that became these like legendary shows. Yeah. I was like, hey, let's go for like my birthday. We didn't know what it was. So then I moved to New York and I started doing improv. Arian was the night manager at the People's Improv Theater. And he's like, you're funny. Just do this thing. Please just, just go get on stage. And mm. I like had street cred because I saw these shows. They're like, oh, you're from Chicago. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was like really good. but it was the same thing like I was thinking about it too I was like why did I take to it so much not having a script not leaning on that mm -hmm. so when I was nine my mom made us take piano lessons mm -hmm. and I hated practicing I hated it I didn't want to do it so then I was like, there's an art form where I don't have to memorize right. or practice anything. <laughs> like I can get on stage and just be, I was like, this is my thing. So yeah, I started taking classes at the pit and I just started setting goals. I was like, I love this so much. I want to take all the classes. So then I took all the classes. I mean, it like you catch, it catches fire. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You love it. You love it. Right. Sure. And then I was like, I want to get on a team. And then I was like, oh, I want to get on a better team. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> and then I was like, I want to yeah. coach. I was like, I want to teach. Nice. And so then by the time I was teaching at the pit, I was one of the few female teachers at the pit. I got on the Baldwins. And like, they were throwing people together. But I mean, it's, it's alchemy. Because when you get on a team that just hits, it just, you, yeah. like, I would get so excited going to the theater and like, one of my favorite parts is like backstage in the green room, just mm -hmm. being with people and just that laughter. And the, it was just making each other laugh and being like, can we just bring this on stage? You know? Right. right. Yeah. And um, you, yeah, I did, I did my 10,000 hours of improv, you know, nice. performing. Yeah. I mean, you're probably past that number, Chris, but it was like, I never kept track. I, you know, for <laughs> me, it was always uh, actually therapy because right. we live up in the Hudson <laughs> Valley. I would, um, we would meet on Sundays, sometimes Wednesday, whatever. Um, but I would hop on the Metro North up here. Mid-Sunday afternoon, oh, I don't want to go. There's a game on TV. Oh, all right, I'll drag my butt there. I get there. <laughs> and after three hours, I don't want to leave. Oh. You know, the, the, it just is it's therapy. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, everything about it is um, it releases you. And, and, and it, brings you to a place where you feel for me anyway feel more confident and, and do you do you find um that uh, do you find it handy as an actor to 
you know, have that skill when you're doing other things? I mean, completely, you know, yeah. so I, my first step into acting on camera was commercial acting, which is all about, can you be able to see what's, you know, what's on the page and then improvise from there. Meaning, sure. can you be like, not just, I'm going to make jokes about American Express, like, no, 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 they don't want you to make jokes about American Express. <laughs> can I, like, take a situation and then heighten it in some way that makes sense to this, right? So like, sure. if that's true, then what else is true, you know? And sure. one of the things I love so much about improv is like, is it's not just I'm playing an astronaut. It's like, what is me as an astronaut looks like, right? Right. So like if the two of us are stuck as astronauts, inherently that's going to be funny because like, gotta be you know like the size of the capsule and the whole thing you know yeah. like I said, and what about two married two married astronauts it's right us. right like, the ability to like be okay having it be a version of myself right like I can put on a wig and pretend to be somebody else but it's still a version of that you know so that helped me a lot unlock the the kind of the fear I guess like I don't have classical training like I don't I've never trained Shakespeare nothing like that you know so the ability to to feel comfortable yes anding in the confines of the character it's been really important that's great sure. that's great now you said the yes, yes anding and those of us who have done improv <laughs> know what that is can you just explain that for the people who are watching who might not know what yes and means absolutely so the idea of uh, the yes and is it's agreement and heightening. So yes is um, uh, I, I have heard you what you've said and I accept it, right? And um, you know if it's if I say scalpel, and Happy says no, it's like Ooh. I don't have a scalpel. Right. Where yeah, are exactly. we? Okay. <laughs> but if I say scalpel and he says here nurse, doctor, whatever. He has accepted that I've set up the situation, which is that. Uh, well, if we were in the scene, I'd be like, here, sexy doctor. <laughs> okay, right, <exactly>. right. <laughs> <laughs> but that is heightening it. I mean, you're adding something to it. So and, you're yes and. So yeah. you're, I accept what you've said, and I'm going to be in this. And here's my uh, point of view, right? Even yes. if you don't like it, you still have to do it, right? right. That happens a lot. It's like, no, I don't want to do it, especially actors. I want to try and control it. But like in, in, especially in drama, like the scenes is conflict, right? That's yeah. where the heart of the scene is. But in improv, it's connection. Right. So you have to completely rewire it and be like, but it's not funny to do that. It's like, it's amazing when you can agree with something that was nothing. And some of the best scenes I've ever seen are just two people comfortable being on stage and then they yeah. start to mirror one another. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. they're creating something that was nothing. Oh my God. And now all of a sudden you're like, he's picking are they in the rain or picking up an umbrella right and the process of like finding it is so exciting it's like it's like we were talking about chris like to be so present and open to that it's just you know yeah. it's I, the, I the process uh yeah. you know i've always found the process fascinating and i've always found that um i'm more successful when i am interesting versus funny <laughs> Funny happens out of interesting. And, and of course, that comes from the yes and. And yeah. happily accepting, you know, you, you say yes to the crime every time. Right. Far more interesting <laughs> than ever saying no or blocking, you know. Right. Absolutely. And the truth is so much funnier. Mm. So much funnier. You know? And the audience is always ahead of ahead of you on stage. And they, they, they want that payoff. Right. Yeah. If you right. give them the payoff, oh, nothing more satisfying. So Meg, you said you were in Chicago. Did you ever go, um, work at or go to the venue at the tracks? Do you remember that place in Chicago? Was that still around when you were there? Well, I grew up in the Burbs and then I left for Chicago. I was 22. I mean, I left for New York. I was 22, oh, okay. 23. So I, I went and I saw TJ and Dave at IO and I saw you see Dubai. I didn't ever go there. 
Okay, great. Yeah, I was in I was just but in I Chicago for a little while. Yeah, there was a cool venue called At the Tracks and I I got to see Chris Farley before he blew up. Oh like this gosh. this guy was like he, this guy was like you got to come to At the Tracks. This guy Chris Farley, he's hilarious. And I still remember it because they um they were doing long form. They were doing the Herald. Is that the long form that you often yeah. participate in? Yeah. So they were doing a Herald and it was somebody said something like camping or something and he became this marshmallow in a mug of hot chocolate that was like <laughs> sentient you know or something and i was just crying crying and this guy knew him so we got to like hang out and he used to hang out with us in chicago all the time before he you know did went off to do his thing so when you mentioned chicago i was like oh my gosh and one other quick thing i also got to audition for del close back in the day wow yeah yeah it was crazy it was great he was yeah he was so interesting such an i didn't get in (laughs) i failed my del close audition i was i started to sing a song he wanted me to sing for some reason and i got really emotional about the song and he's like yeah no that's i'm not that's not what i'm into or something like that he's like i I had to leave i was like oh okay you know that was my del close story my one i've heard a lot of crazy stories about him he's wild yeah yeah i heard some yeah really crazy stuff Um, and he was I forget what his title was on Saturday Night Live it was I mean oh, right it was like the pharmaceutical associate on SNL or something right right I was flying everybody <laughs> the drugs to get there but it was yeah, yeah. no I never I never got to see those guys. <laughs> but one of the things I love so much about uh, Chris Farley is that story about how he um and I think it was Lauren Michaels actually who said Chris Farley was the only person who he had to say, we want to pull you back. On oh, wow. Wow. He yeah. just came yes. so I can powerful. See yeah. You're like, yeah. you just make it small as opposed to like, fill the room, hit the back of the house. I always remember the, how inspiring that was. Yeah. Well, um, switching gears just a, a, a tiny little bit. Um, happy, uh, Wayne and I were talking about, you know, you, we watched your, your reel and I got to thinking about improv and some of the work you've done and you did um you played the part of a heckler in the comedian with the robert de niro and we watched that and we said this would be instructive for people who are watching this who who want to be able to do that kind of thing was that um was that improvised to a degree or was it completely structured and scripted i think what ended up in the movie was highly highly improvised i mean we did so many versions of it uh, yeah. i i don't actually remember what was written and what dumb wow. shit i came <laughs> up with uh but uh but you know also i was a little like um i'm glad i didn't uh think about it too much because the whole process was first the callback was with taylor hackford and then in the next callback you had to read with de niro and then wow and like and you know i i'm not unique in saying i grew up idolizing him so yeah. Um, I, I, but I, I treated it like any other job and it was going great. And he and I were getting along great. And then when my stunt double went in, I had kind of an out of body experience and it hit me. I was like, Oh my God, I'm like in a big conflict scene with Robert De Niro right, watching right. this guy dressed like me being thrown all over the place. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I, a lot of those one scene jobs I did like bird box and bad boys, mm-hmm. almost everything in it is improvised yep, um, yep. Even, even though the, you know it's a three-page scene with with mm-hmm. um, yeah written words but we just like like uh for instance when i in bad boys when i told martin lawrence i'm in a fast food fist fuck you that was not <laughs> <laughs> oh, i love that stuff so much yeah i was telling we were talking and i told chris oh, how much you get called on in these scenes in films to just they, they go okay that was great now just make some stuff up you know <laughs> like now you guys just go at it or you just throw something yeah, in there so- and it takes off so that's that's good that's good to hear um, well it came find- across as very yeah. natural yeah i'm sorry wayne uh, no, just, i was just gonna I, say- I, yeah <laughs> I was going to ask, do you find that there's a difference, though, between the amount of improv you do between films and television? Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 I, I, I've hardly done any uh, improv on. And I feel like I've done mostly improv on movies. Like even. Yeah. Even Isn't that strange? Yeah. Through, totally. Even a movie where I'm in it throughout, like something like Bright. Uh, so much of it that ended up was improvised, which is that's the only way I'm able to improvise. Like I can't do what Meg does, right. like just walk out there and just make it. Like I don't know what, what are we doing here. I don't know. Um, but it, within the structure of a solid script, I can I can, usually can come up with at least some shit that's usable. Right, know? right. <laughs> also, I grew up in the Hudson Valley. You know, 
Oh, I did yeah. not know that. I did not know that. Where, where, Falls, where about? Oh, okay, great. Where, where, yeah. I'm sorry, where? where? I High Falls, which is oh, next High to Falls. New yeah. 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 It's not far from the city, but it's another fucking planet. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Close <laughs> enough to the city, but close enough. Far, sure. yeah. It was a drag to grow up there, but now I love it. I love going back. Yeah. Great. Great. I will say this though about like the improvising within the scene. Like, first of all, you totally can do it. Like getting on stage. I, I've done it with you, and that went pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, so the idea of like everyone gets on stage and they're thoroughly scared, like there's nothing there. But like you beforehand, you're not coming up, but you're just like, okay, the show's gonna be 25 minutes long. Uh, what's the form? You know what I mean? We're gonna let the scenes be, you know, four minutes up top and then edit. Like, you know what it is. You're just filling in the little bits. It's like, sure. even if- Yeah, that's actors, true, you yeah, know? yeah. That's the thing is I'm like, you, there's so, and as long as you say yes and trust your scene partner. That's why I only improvise with you. <laughs> also, and Will Smith. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's yeah. just me and Will that's Smith, right. so. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. well, you know. But I think you're right though. I think if you trust the partners that you're with or the partner, then it makes it a lot, it does make it a lot easier. Um, I know for myself what I do, I actually think about the improv before I go on set, like just in case, you know, like I'm like, I'm not good at just coming oh, you up have with lines exactly. in your back pocket. I have a few. Yeah. yeah so here's yeah. a here's a quick example. Like they were like, I saw in the script that it said, like, I played a teacher and it said he teaches. And I'm like, oh boy. I'm going to get on set and they're going to be like, now teach something, <laughs> you know? Uh, so I worked on a whole thing about Robert Frost poem into the woods or whatever, you know, on a snowy, stopping by woods on a snowy evening. I had this whole thing. And then I get into the classroom and props has set up sitting bowl. And <laughs> they're like, you're going to teach a lesson about sitting bowl. So I ran to Google and I was like, I learned like five facts and I got up there and I'm like, so sitting bowl was part of, you know, <laughs> I had to teach a whole class. And they, afterwards, the high school kids who were the background actors, they're like, Mr. Pyle, we learned more about sitting bowl today than we did ever in school. <laughs> so it's, I think it's good sometimes to kind of think about it before, you know, you go into it. So now you guys started to kind of tell me a little bit about how you met, like you said, you sort of met and then it was a few years before you got together could you do you mind sharing that story with us i know it's kind of like soapy to ask about meeting each other but i i, I you know i i just am, i'm curious myself heidi and i met doing romeo and juliet like so many years ago and we didn't get back together until many many years later we looked each other up and ended up getting together but we started out on right. a production of romeo and juliet playing romeo and juliet so I'm, i was curious about your story if you don't mind sharing it with us um well Meg likes to say love, it was love at second sight. <laughs> when, when we first met, um, for me, it was at least lost at first sight. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but Arian, uh, yeah. my great friend, uh, gave her a warning about me. So, uh, oh. so when I you know, gave her my elevator pitch for myself, uh, she was like, okay. Okay. I, I know. <laughs> I'll see you after the tennis. So I went to see Death of a Salesman, mm -hmm. and I had heard about him, you know, because he was like, yeah, the mayor of campus or whatever, like large. Right. But I didn't realize exactly who he was in the show, so I was like, oh my god, who did they find this like older, beaten up guy playing? <laughs> and I was like, that's happy. He's twenty four, whatever. I was like, right actor right there and yeah, what's yeah. wild is that we found after we started dating and we talked i it was the first time i met went to florida to visit his parents mm -hmm. i had we had both forgotten that his parents were at the cast party at the director's house and i had met them oh right and i was like this party's boring like let's go to a wilder party and they were like that party was so insane. <laughs> was like, drinking and drugs. And I was like, that's a really good perspective on where I was at that time. <laughs> but yeah, so then, so we, you know, we like, you know, I was, I was in Chicago at the time and we, this kind of similar group of friends. And then I moved to the city and we still kind of like hung out like a bit socially, but then we kind of went our separate ways. And then we ran, we, again, like, the concentric circle of mutual friends, you know, and we yeah. ran into each other like on 46th Street yeah. between six and seven. Right. And I was like, it's happy. Love that guy. <laughs> He's so great. And we went to the diner and we were chatting. And for what I was like, oh my gosh. And I'm in this apartment in Astoria, 3058, 34th Street. And Happy's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where did you live? And I told him, and he's like, I just 
moved out of 3058 34 what no yeah. and i was like no same i was like no way he's like i was <laughs> Or above you. Wow. What are you talking about? Well, well, lest lest we forget, I lived with Arian when I moved to New York and oh, okay. was politely asked to leave when I was uh, doing my partying. And then Meg moved in with Arian and yeah. the same thing happened with her. <laughs> <laughs> and so, my next I wasn't so, right. so now we have to get Arian on the show. I've been trying to get him. He's not, I don't think he's going to come on, but now we got to get him on and get his perspective of this story. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, anyway, that's so great. Then, yeah, so I'm still know. I'm still back at that first party where uh, Happy's parents were there and you're saying we need a more wild party. And I just I, I have this thought of them going, that's our future daughter in law. But they don't know that yet. <laughs> right. Right. That's right. Yeah. I love them. They're so fun and hilarious. Well, I mean, Happy, so they're great. Yeah. And they were like such a good sense of humor about it, too. Anyway, oh, my God. Really fun. Well, uh, Happy your credits are really extensive as we mentioned before uh can you tell us a funny or moving story from a time on set of a film or a tv show oh you know, you know that's so funny i looked at that question uh before we started and so many of the funny things that have happened on set are like things we came up with but i'm like <laughs> on set for for movies for movies yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm I, i'm like was having such a hard time remembering remembering some of the ridiculous lines uh, uh, but one that's uh, sort of adjacent to fast food fist fuck is um, uh, uh, I was doing uh, when the pandemic but pre vaccine when the pandemic was really raging I did yeah. a thing in Montana that hasn't come out yet and it was <laughs> with Kate Bosworth and this guy David Yao do you guys remember the band the Jesus Lizard yes yeah it, it, uh, he, uh, he was the lead singer oh the, wow okay Jesus yeah Lizard. yeah and uh, and and Michael, her husband at the time, was the director. And he was like, yeah, so, and I made up this term. I was like, you want me to freelance on this one? He was like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, <laughs> I'm going to steal that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and my name in it was was Honeycut. And, and David would sometimes pause between honey and cut. And so we did a take. And, and, and Kate Bosworth, we're torturing her. She's 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 strapped up. It's a comedy. It's a, it's yeah. a lighthearted yeah. romp. And, and he does it again. He goes, honey and I went yes honey and then I look at Kate Bosworth and I go we don't really have sex we're not lovers we just did it twice <laughs> we didn't like it the first time <laughs> nice nice yeah. I can't wait to see this <laughs> yeah yeah so there's a lot of stuff like that that's like and the moving stuff is you know like De Niro or um uh, I got to be on Broadway with Al Pacino that was yeah uh, whoa and um you know people that I've uh, really like before I knew any better would just would base my technique off of watching them you know right and then before you're there off, like, and then you're there acting with them you're like this yeah, is at some point there's like a little voice that goes oh my god <laughs> yeah it's really beautiful for yeah. you know yeah. for as long for the seconds that you can enjoy it yeah exactly right <laughs> how about you Meg I uh I imagine you have some interesting experiences uh -huh one i have one it's a commercial it's not um this is actually my favorite story between both of us oh great great you know so much of the work that i was doing is improv based so like when your base level is already there you, you know it can be even something really really hilarious is still like yeah yeah it's hilarious move on right this, right this was a commercial i booked this commercial as a toyota commercial with eli manning and oh, wow. it, it nice. filmed it filmed um you know it was like in the tri-state area wild spots so I like, right oh, right no one's gonna see this <laughs> and it was that eli manning could like solve problems just by looking and being eli manning and they were really 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 specific they're like he's off limits to talent you are not to talk to eli manning like he is separate from you and right. I, I was like <laughs> i'm you know, grew up like a fair weather bears fan. So I was like, okay, like, you know, he's just a guy. Yeah. Happy's like a diehard, like psychotic giants fan. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, it was like you, booked it. you booked it. I can't believe you booked it. I was, I was like, doing, yeah. oh Shakespeare. my gosh. I was, I was doing three Shakespeare plays at the old globe. And I was like, I, I want to switch places. Right. I, yeah. I, I, was like, <laughs> I don't have lines. I'm like the water delivery person. So I was like, I'm going to go talk to the guy. He's just standing there. He's just like, it's Eli Manning is just like awkwardly standing by himself because wow. the producers were like, don't talk to him. So he was like standing by himself. And I was like, 
hey man what's up like how's it going you know, he's super tall super smart and funny and I was like look I know you're big blue but we always say big red loves big blue and he's like <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> we had to talk to him. I got to yeah, him. that's that's great. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, that's really funny. That's a great story. Thanks for sharing those both of those yes, stories. Of course, with us. Yeah, we appreciate you it. Any, you know, that's buddy, to be off limits. Please invite me. Strike up a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll I'm, well, I'm, I always boundary. worry about that. You know, when they say that, you know, when they're like, "Oh, don't talk to." Um, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Willis is the same way. You're not supposed to like yeah. talk to Bruce Willis and things like that. You know, of course, that always makes me want to go, hey, Bruce, what's going on? Because I think just anybody else like it's like you were saying before, like when you are on set, there's something that's like the status is gone. Like we're in the right. scene together, we belong in yeah. the scene together and it's whatever is happening between the characters. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're an actor. I'm an actor. Right. And because if you're, even if it's those moments of like, oh my God, it's representing Aaron. Yeah. You know, and it's the youth talking about this, you have to go back in and be like, we're just two actors. Talking. That's right. Oh, I just remembered a great moving story. Yes, please. Uh, yes, please. So, so I, I did a guest star in the old show, show Elementary. Now, growing up, <laughs> I, 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 I lived next to Mandy Patinkin at one point and I lived next to Aiden Quinn at another point. Right. And uh, and I hadn't seen Aiden since I was 14 or 13 or something. Mm -hmm. So when I went up, my scene was with him. And so when I went up to him, uh, I was like, Aiden, it's it's me happy. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I remember you used to pay me to feed your dog 50 bucks a week. He's like, wow. why did you feed my dog? And I go, no, Eric Anderson's kid. And you saw the light bulb go off. And he was like, oh, my yeah. God. You know? yep, yep. And, and we spent the whole day catching up. And then my friend from college directs that show sometimes, or directed that show sometimes. Mm -hmm. He came in two weeks later, and Aiden was still talking about it. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, he's uh, he's up here with us. In, uh, in Rockland? He, uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, I think in Rockland, right? Uh, I'm not sure, but his, his brother lives in Cornwall. Um, and... Uh, his niece, his brother's daughter, worked with worked you with, on Me America. Worked with us on uh, the film Me America, which yeah. was completely shot in Newburgh. Yeah. And, oh, amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then she she was working on the film and she also ended up getting a part in the film. She's just this little tiny thing. And <laughs> she was she wasn't an actress, but she was absolutely brilliant. She was As, great. Yeah. Yeah. She was really great. Yeah. So Uncle Aiden called her up and said, What's this I hear? You? <laughs> <laughs> That's Uncle Aiden, yeah, Alice, Alice Quinn, yeah. yes, Alice Quinn, yeah, and she's, um, I think she's still around doing stuff in our area, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, and say, so happy. What is the difference? Would you say besides we talked about the improv thing and how it's different between, um, film and TV? And I've mentioned this to Chris before too, how it's so different because TV is like written by a group of writers who get very upset if you change their words. <laughs> it all has to go through committee and everything like that. But other than that, what would you say is the difference between like working as a series regular on a TV show and other types of projects that you've done? Like how is the recurring thing different um, as an actor or in your own personal view? Well, that, yeah, I mean, the only way to des describe it is just that the, the days are so different. Like on mm -hmm. TV, you have to fit a lot of scenes into one right. day and movies get to take their time, um, uh, sometimes a lot of time. And um, my two favorite uh, recurs that I had uh, were two series that were shot as a, basically like movies. It was the same director for the whole thing. So like The Nick was shot as a 10 hour movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was yeah. A 10 episodes. So um, that kind of, um, I don't want to say rigidity, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, foundation or something. Mm -hmm. Sure. The, the clear lines you're within uh, yeah. is actually very lib liberating. But, mm. you know, uh, 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 four episodes of The Blacklist, I, I mean, like, I can't even remember what I did on that show because there'd be days where we do five or six scenes and then, you know. And, yeah. and one of the scenes, I, I I walk to a car, and that's it for that. Scene. Right, right. <laughs> now, do you well? Do you find with a recurring role where you're on a lot on a TV show, does it does it somehow make it uh, like? Do you find it to be easier, more difficult? You know that kind of thing. Like uh, as oh, far way as like, easier. Per, oh, way you're on easier. A lot, yeah. way way because you get to know the people. And yeah, like, yeah, that's you, what I thought. You know, when you're like when you're a guest in somebody's home, basically for uh, one or two days or three days, it's yeah. like you never. You never really feel a part of it, right? Uh, right. You know, you're you're like a gun for hire, which is great. I mean, it's still a good job. It's but, still um, fun, yeah. 
but but to 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 feel like maybe you're not in the immediate family but you're like a cousin who gets invited right, over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nicki that, Minaj's cousin's friend right. oh, yeah. oh yes yeah <laughs> I just read about that today Almost so I do balls. get that reference yeah <laughs> Happy, you you occasionally teach uh, acting workshops. What would you say is the number one thing actors should be working on to be camera ready? Well, uh, specifically for on, uh, the main thing I teach is that one day uh, on cam audition for camera workshop, and um, the most important thing you can do is prepare for it as if it's the job. Like, forget about uh, the result because right. All you and also it's an opportunity to. To act like to have a captive audience because they have to watch you, right. you know, and you're there <laughs> right. to solve their problem. Um, it's true. But yeah. I always say when you when you leave, but now that everything's uh, self taped, it's a little different. But I used to say when you leave, uh, uh, and I'll do because the other way I look at it is this is a chance to sh share your own experience through somebody else's words. Right. So you're you're expressing your life experience through these words on a page. And so when you leave the audition, the worst thing you can do is be like, did I nail it? Did I book it? Did they like me? You, you ask yourself two questions, I feel very strongly. You ask yourself, did I tell the truth and did I enjoy myself? And if you can say yes to both of those, then it's the audition was a success. And you, if you happen to get the cherry on top, yeah. the, the, you know, the call to go do it, well, that's a bonus because you, you've already done your job. You've already succeeded. Exactly. Very nice. Thanks for that. And, and how about you, Meg? What do you, um, what do, you do to prepare for auditions? You know, I feel like so much of it is, it's funny because the, the, the idea of what you were talking about, Wayne, is like, I'm going to prepare a little bit off script ahead mm. of time. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I, it, it, commercially, they're going to ask that. They're going to ask two takes and you want to be able to be prepared. Um, so that's kind of the same thing that I try to bring to a regular audition. You mm. know, it's like, can you show up? be there on time, right? And do your best work. I honestly, in pandemic, haven't had any legit auditions mm -hmm. that are yeah. live. Right. I mean, Self tape, right. it's like, it's exactly what you're talking about. Like right. I can do it 10 times. I can like, and I can go back and I can look at it. Right, exactly. Which I love yeah. being able to do that. <laughs> I mean like- Big time, yeah. It's yeah. so painful for me to go back and look and be like, oh God, why did I? <laughs> but like it, it's so extraordinary to learn from it well i mean it really is yeah. my entire career has been based on like you do something on stage and it goes off into the ether and that's it you know right right and it's how yep. people feel yeah this is like, that's right let me be able to look and see like can i am i i am huge so i move a lot and it's like can right. i remember to be really still yeah you yeah, know very nice yeah that's a big part of it. any other tips for folks who are just like Cause a lot, like, this is what I get a lot in my coaching is like self-taping anything that you like have learned in your hours of self-taping as Chris was talking about earlier. And, you know, any like little tips that people might be able to take away from self-tape auditions that you could share with people. Keep it simple. If you, if you think you're doing enough, do less. Nice. Uh, uh, interesting. And, yeah. And, um, and uh, although we can watch it 10 times, I don't necessarily advise that because sure. The, you, the temptation is to get so precious with it. You're yeah. like, ah, well, I squinted on this line. I better do it all over again. Right, right. And I've heard like four takes is like what you should really do because that's what we're going to do anyway when we show up on set. They're going to yeah. do two or three takes maybe. So Unless if you you're do in a feature take, show, then you're going to do 75. That's takes. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. I'll say this is like, yeah. I'll set up like the technical side of it and be like, and you know, you get the right backdrop, get the right lighting, make it look really nice, make it yeah. look good and clean. You know, we have an app that we use at like films and in 4k, like, oh, yeah, make it look great. good. And oh, it nice. will. Oh. <laughs> like, I will say this, I'll watch and I'll be like, okay, cool. That was really good. Next time. Can you try this? <laughs> and like, <laughs> have you booked a job? And, um, he, in that particular, I went back and watched the audition. He, I don't uh -huh. even think he did, but I was like, that was the audition where I was like, you're not really doing that much. Can you make it really big? And he was yeah. like, and the director was like, it was so good because you did less. And in the middle of it, happy was like, honey, I love you. I really appreciate you. <laughs> but like, you gotta trust me when I do this. And I think that's the thing. It's like, it's amazing to get all these opinions. Uh, yeah. But you gotta trust when you know. 
Yeah, I love that. I love that you that you shared that. That's so good. You know, one of my best yeah. auditions was I knocked over a jewelry box in the middle of it and I just kept it in. <laughs> you know, I wasn't even trying to, but it but it like fit in with the scene and it was so authentic. I like knocked this jewelry box over and just kept going. And the director actually, when I was on set, he was like, Man, that audition was, you know, that was awesome. You know, it was so good that you did that. And the, you know, it was really cool that he had actually mentioned it and remembered it from this thing that I thought for sure was just gonna be a complete failure, <laughs> you know, because it just knocked something over. But I stayed in the moment and you know, the rest of it just kind of and I reacted to it for real. So it was like this real moment of me just yeah, that's of, all that matters. Fuck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. This um uh Jenna Malone film that uh, both Wayne and I are in. Uh, which is going to be shown this coming uh, two weeks, I think, right? Yeah, right? Woodstock, yep. And um, I, my, I have a very small part, but my part in the film, I never got on set. It was my audition. Right. That's right. Yeah, they used his audition. <laughs> they used my audition. As the final, because yeah. it was like a YouTube, it was supposed to be like a YouTube video. So they're like, we're just going to use this. We like the audition. <laughs> I But I didn't know that for like a month. I, I you know, I booked the job and I'm, I was like, I call the agent. I say, so uh, am I supposed to be going anytime soon? I think they wrap pretty soon. Right, right. And then all of a sudden I got a contract and it was like, okay, you're done. Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That should be, yeah, that'll be interesting to see what they did with it. I'm very curious to see what that looks like in, in the film, in the final product. Yeah, okay. hopefully it's still there. But yeah. well, Thanks. anyway, I, I'm sorry. I wanted to, to um, uh, ask you guys, um, uh, well, uh, Happy Omega, if, if people want to find out more about the two of you, how do they go about doing that? Instagram. Yes. That's the one that we update the most. Yeah. Okay, great. Can, can you tell us your handles and we'll put yes. them on the, we'll put them on Mine the screen. Mine is. Uh, Marge927. Marge927. And yours is. Happy Anderson Acting. And the show is the Anderson TV, TV show. show. Okay, yes. great. Yeah, we'll put that up. Great. And is there anything else you'd like? Uh, us to know before you go i think i might have cut you off meg uh, oh go. i was gonna i what well, i was gonna say something back about the auditions oh well, yes please yes, yes please love to hear it yeah i was just gonna say um that getting to watch happy he's um it he's so um bad shut up rigorous <laughs> <laughs> Oops, you're we, don't happy. we don't believe you happy we don't believe you but like, he's so rigorous with how he prepares. And mm -hmm. it's like, he's always off book, always, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And it's like, he, and, and we were just saying that yesterday, I think, and it was like the, um, he's, he's, it's like, it was just, they were great auditions. He's mm -hmm. like, I know they were great for myself and that's okay. And yeah. even if the director didn't hire him because it wasn't because the audition was bad, it's because he wasn't right. Right. And I, I, yeah, I just was like, oh, that's so, that's so important to remember when you do it. Cause you send it out there and you're like, so easy to point back on yourself, especially when you're starting out. That's just yeah. what I want. I felt prey to that thinking really easily. And I see him do it and I'm like, oh, you just do it. And then you move on from it. There's like no emotion. He's like, I did a good job. I'm happy with yeah. it. What's next? I know, you know. I think there's a lot of power in that. And I think we do need to hold on to our power for those kinds of things. So thank you. Thank you for, for sure. sharing that. That's, that's a lesson that um, yeah. I could absorb right there. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, Happy and Meg, thank you so much like for taking time out of your busy schedules to come and talk with us today. It was so great to see both of you. Um, for those of you who are watching, make sure to check out Happy and Meg on the Andersons TV show on Instagram and on a television or film screen near you. You will be very glad that you yes. did. Right, right now on Spotify and Apple Music, I'm in a scripted podcast called Electric Easy with Kesha and Mason Gooding and uh, Chloe Bailey. It's good. Uh, Great. You know, so Spotify, Electric Easy. Yes. That's how people find it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Okay, great. I, I, I love I love this stuff. So I'll definitely check it out and we'll get the, the viewers to check it out so as well. Good. It's so nice to talk with you guys. It's great well, to talk with you too. Oh, it's great. And, and um, thanks for being here. And also don't forget to check out all the other great content we have this year at the 2021 Hunter Mountain Film Festival running October 22nd through the 24th at huntermountainfilmfestival.com. And that's our show for today. We're so glad that all of you have joined us and that you're part of our film and TV community. Stay safe out there, folks. Be well and keep telling those stories. Hey, Chris, do you yeah. know what time it is? I certainly do, Wayne. It's time to 
roll the credits. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Take everybody. Care. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care, guys.